are you doing today, sir? I, I'm okay. A bit tired because <laughs> I I, uh, I just uh, wrapped uh, out of a shoot recently. I heard what you're yeah. filming. I interviewed Michael Stahlberg. Oh yeah, you did. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's I I, I uh, and I just wrapped like maybe ten days ago, and it's like been a ride since a few uh, years, and so I'm my uh, yeah I'm a bit uh, enthusiastic. Happy director and a bit tired director. <laughs> I will take a break in two years. I'm gonna sleep a lot. I, I was gonna say. Uh, well, let me jump into why I get. To, I have a lot of questions, but let me jump into why I get to talk to you today. I want to start by saying congratulations on your movie. It is. I loved it. It's fantastic. Uh, it's so good. Um, when you got the script, was it an immediate? Oh my effing god! I have to t do this project. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's very strange uh, where inspir inspiration is coming from, and it's like. Uh, most of the time it's something that is like a hammer in your face. I mean, it's like, uh, I read the screenplay, I remember I was, go I was going uh, to uh, doing the sound on Prisoners in London and I, I had that screenplay that just arrived on my desk uh, strongly, strongly that my agent called me in the middle of the night said, Denis, I just finished something, it is for you, it's exactly what you're looking for, it's about, it's a, 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 around a place in the world that you want to shoot which is the the border of uh, the Mexican border at the southern United States? It said it's exactly the kind of project you're looking for. You're gonna you, uh, watch out, and I and uh, I read it immediately. And I remember I was flying. Uh, I mean, it's a long story just to say that I I just felt doom when I, I read the the screenplay uh, because I I felt in love with it deeply right from the start. I was amazed. I was uh, in awe and uh, terrorized by his content, by the violence and the darkness of it. But in the same time, it was such a powerful story. So uh, I said, okay. And I, I was finishing Prisoners at that time. I was saying, w do I really want to go back in that darkness again? Did, did I think, okay, why, why, I, should I do a rom com or a, 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 a singing movie, dance, something dance? I don't know. I, it's just, but it's, uh, I was an uh, inspiration. Um, and it, it's a movie that I feel that had a strong link with the uh, Essensian prisoners, that it was a continuity of a, a train of thought. I mean, it was something that I felt that was making sense and uh, I was compelled to, to do. And uh, it's uh, yeah, very mysterious where you get the, where from you get the call. I don't know what, what I'm saying in English makes sense right now, but it's just a call, yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this movie was not the, the, I don't. I don't like talking numbers, but I, I think the movie was fifty million or under. Is that safe, or was it? The the movie uh, the budget yeah. is uh, something around thirty million. That, yeah. that, that's what I heard, and I have to be honest with you. It looks so much bigger than that number. Um, uh, was it tough to to make this for that budget? It was. It's listen. I'm coming from a world indie movies where I'm used to have a, to to try to um, create cinema with a, not a, with small budget. I mean, in Canada, was when I was making movies in Montreal, I used to have a lot of freedom, but not a, not a lot of money. And uh, when you want to make movies, uh, there's a you are telling stories sometimes that are bigger than your budget. And so I'm used to try to bring scope. Uh, with a small amount of money, and uh, I remember that when we saw the from a realistic way how we could do that story, we had we will uh, my crew and I will we did need to go back to that kind of indie spirit, which is try to find creative solutions to try to be able to create that scope on the screen with less money. It's true that this movie, if it had been made by a, a big director, it would have. Mm, been made with 80 million or 100 million, I don't know, but it's true that uh, we found, I'm working with people that have a lot of creativity, creativity that can find uh, ways of uh, create a lot of, uh, uh, a lot. The, money, the money was put in front of the camera, <laughs> it's, 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 no, I, it's, it's totally on yeah. screen. Um, how long was your first cut compared to what people are going to see? It's a very good question. Uh, the thing is, uh, I think that the, the it's a good question. I don't recall um, if my memory is good. It's it's like uh, I was quite. Uh, well, I'm very severe with uh, my uh, my material. I mean, when when I, I start uh, editing, I'm the I'm very barbaric and very. Uh, uh, if I wasn't uh, 
if I, uh, I was not a director, I would be an editor. I love editing. It's my, uh, maybe my favorite part of the filmmaking process. It's, uh, uh, and, uh, and, but, and, uh, and uh, I, I have no self-indulgence, I hope. I am trying to be the toughest uh, audience. I, I'm, I'm so, the, the, from the assembly to the first cut, I, it's a movie that was uh, uh, shot with the necessity. So we, we, there's a lot of, I was aware that uh, we had needed to be very precise because as we were shooting, because to keep the money in front of the camera and to, I was not, I didn't want to have too much of it ending on the editing floor. So it was very precise shoot. I don't think that they're the, uh, but uh, I'm trying to, it's a movie that in the editing room, it was not about a structure. Obviously, it's like a mission. It's like a James Bond movie. You, know? you sure. get a mission and you do the mission. So it's a, it does not a, but um, so it was more very very. Uh, it, the editing was more about. It's not about the length, but more about to find <coughs> to create the right tension in the film, and uh, make sure that all the character will have their chance to uh, express themselves uh, from a dramatic point of view. Could you see yourself doing a extended cut or? Uh, are there a lot of deleted scenes that are not in the film? Um, I'm just curious about that. There will be never an extended cut of one of my movies because when I cut something, it's because I believe it doesn't belong to the movie. So there's never deleted scenes that I allow on the DVD or Blu-ray. Or I, I, I hate that because it's something... Uh, the cut of all my movies are director's cut. There's no... The, the cuts are not... Um, I had the chance to uh, work with great editors and producers that uh, trusted me. So there's no uh, one, you, you, the, the movie you see on the screen is my film. I'm not, I have nothing else to say about, uh, uh, you know, understand what I mean? So there's no sure. scenes. When I kill a, a, a shot uh, in the editing room, it's because I, I believe that the movie will be better without. So uh, that, that, and sometimes I, I, I kill the, the best shots, you know. The, the, I remember on Prisoners, the, we made a shot with Roger, and it was like the I think maybe the best shot I did in my life. And I said to myself, "But it doesn't belong to the film. The movie would be more powerful without it." And uh, and I cut it, and in split second, you know, it's like I, I became very uh, cruel about. Uh, well, you're being cruel to us because we all love Roger Deakins. Yeah, yeah. So when we would love to see this scene. That no, 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 no. Roger's yeah, yeah, and uh, Roger's very mad at me sometimes. <laughs> I remember somebody said, how oh, come you dare cutting that shot? I say, I'm sorry, sir, but it's like, the movie is better without, and it's, it, and it's why, and that's, it's the thing I love about Roger, when we work, every shot we are making, it's important for Roger to understand his importance in, in, the, in, the, in the movie, and if it will stay in the movie, and I, I, so that's why we are trying to shoot in a very economic way, each shot uh, has its own importance, and as uh, and it's crucial. Sometimes editing is a, is a cruel process. Sometimes the, the shot doesn't make it uh, until the end. But um, I'm sorry, uh, it's tough for me to talk about that because I ju I'm, I'm, I ju I'm just out of the, uh, a shoot that was so intense that uh, my I have a kind of a, my memories are like oh, no, it's like erase about all that process. But it's uh, Sicario editing was a very exciting moment. I it was the first time I was working with. Uh, and you, uh, an editor that uh, I met for this project. His name is Joe Walker. Joe is uh, uh, known for his work with Steve McQueen. He, he did it, sure. uh, his, uh, and such a strong editor. And I had the best time with him. And uh, uh, Sicario owe him a lot. And but um, it's strange. I don't recall the length of the assembly. <laughs> uh, it's fine. I'm going to ask you a question that you can answer without uh, uh, too much difficulty, hopefully. Um, my audience and myself are huge fans of your next project, your next sci-fi endeavor. Yeah, yeah. And I have to ask, was there any hesitation on your part to doing a sequel to a, a film that is so revered to so many people? Um, so I just want to, you know, were you nervous about that? It's more than nervous. It's a deep fear. I mean, when I, I uh, first of all, when I heard that the uh, Ridley Scott wanted to do a, a, another movie in the same in the Blade Runner universe, I, I was saying to the first my reaction is that it's a fantastic idea, but what maybe a very bad idea. I mean, me, me, I'm among I'm among the hardcore 
fan of Blade Runner. I'm, 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 Blade Runner uh, is a movie, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a movie that is linked with the, my birth of uh, love, passion for cinema. I was like, uh, I still remember, uh, I'm coming from a small town in Quebec. Where at that time there was no internet and the way to be in contact with movies were those fan magazines, American like a fantastic film or star log, you know, and I was, sure. I still remember the shock, the impact of seeing the first frame, first pictures coming out of Blade Runner. Me and my friend, friends, we were like in awe and so excited and, and the movie was uh, such a strong, powerful cinematic experience something new, a new way of seeing sci-fi. And I, I, uh, for me, it's like a monument. So when I, I, had, I uh, realized one day that they put in front of me the, the Blade Runner uh, uh, project screenplay, and for me, it was like uh, I was uh, very moved to have this honor to read the screenplay. But I accept to do it for because I felt that Hampton Fencher, Ridley Scott and Michael Green did a fantastic job for the screenplay. It's a very powerful screenplay. And I felt that it, it made sense to me. And I had the Ridley Scott blessing. But if you ask me if uh, I hesitated, I hesitated massively. It took me a lot of time to say yes. Not because I didn't believe in it, because I was saying, who am I to dare to touch that? And at the same time, there's a part of me say, I'm a art card fan. I don't. I don't want to fuck it up. I mean, I want. I, it, it's like. It's like. It's a very. Uh, you want to make sure it's being done right. I have that pretentious. I, I said yes because I feel that I can do it. Otherwise, I would have not. And that's. Uh, yeah. I have to ask, where and when are you going to be filming? That I cannot say. I can answer to. I can say to you that it's going to be uh, next summer. So I, I will uh, shoot the next summer. But I. Oh, uh, it. Where it's uh, still uh, in talk. Uh, one of the things about Blade Runner that everyone loves is the atmosphere. It's the, it's the quiet shots of the city. It's what really brought to the screen. It's a place you want to go and experience. Mm. How much are you thinking already about the atmosphere that you are going to put on screen? And it's a huge challenge because you don't want to cut and paste. Otherwise, why? It's a, and, and at the same time, you have to respect what was done. So it's going to it's find the right equilibrium between being faithful to, to the first one and bringing something new in the same time that will make sense to uh, to the Blade Runner universe. I mean, it's and, uh, my answer is very boring right now, but it's a big, massive challenge to be able to... You know, I'm, I'm totally aware of the <laughs> huge challenge. It's a, bi it's, a, it, it's a risk. I know that every single fan will walk into the theater, will walk in with a baseball bat. <laughs> I'm aware of that. And I respect that, right. and, and, and it's okay with me, because I'm making cinema, not, I, I, it's art. Art is risk, and I have to take risk, and it's, it's going to be the, massive, the biggest risk of my life, but I'm, I'm okay with that. It's, for me, it's very exciting. It's a, the biggest challenge of a, as a, for a filmmaker, for my, as a filmmaker, it's going to be my biggest challenge, but it's just so inspiring. I'm so inspired. I... I that's all I can say. I was dreaming to do sci-fi since I'm 10 years old. No, I, I mean, and, and I, I, I'm, and there's, I said no to a, ton, a lot of sequels. I, I was offered numerous kind of uh, movie that I said no because I felt that was not really, I couldn't say no to that Blade Runner project. It's too, I love it too much. I guess. So I said, all right, fuck, fuck it. I, I will do, do it and, and uh, give everything I have to, to make it great. That's what can I say. Um, one of the things about Blade Runner is that there are multiple cuts. There's the director's cut. There <laughs> yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are so many cuts. How does all the versions of Blade Runner that exist sort of factor into the movie you're making in terms of do you have to have seen the original to appreciate your movie or is there a version that you prefer that people watch before the version you're thinking about making? Me, me I was... Uh... I, I should say that the movie will be autonomous and, and at the same time uh, there will be uh, some link but uh, I, I cannot say, talk too much about it. The only thing I can say is that uh, I was raised with the original cut. I, I uh, The original version that really doesn't like. Narration. Was, yeah, with the narration. I, I mean, that's the Blade Runner I, 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 uh, I was uh, introduced to at the beginning and that I loved for years. And then I must say that uh, I'm someone that... Uh, appreciated the, the very last 
uh, cut of Ridley, the ultimate version. So between those two parentheses, I don't uh, the all the different cuts. I, me is the first and the last, very last that I, I I'm more inspired by. Yeah, I should say. Um, and I, it's very I, you you are uh, you understand that for me that project. I understand why. If I was in your shoes, I would try to ask as much questions as, as I can. And you understand that if you were on mine, you cannot answer. No, <laughs> so it's, 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 it's the way it's like, uh, yeah. Um, uh, the two last things, because then I got to go. Uh, I heard that you guys are incorporating the real use of time. Like there's a time element of, say the mo last movie took place in the year 100. This movie takes place in the year 130. You know, like 30 years after the last one. Is that true? Not true? I cannot tell nothing about that, unfortunately. And you know what? A thing I love... The less you guys will know, the more it's going to be interesting. Totally. The thing, the, the thing is... is uh, it's a thing nowadays, because of internet... And I, I understand that is an enthusiasm. But me, a thing I love as a, as a film lover is to sit in, in, in a theater not knowing a lot of things. But and I try to... I will try to... And if we were talking to me about uh, the last movie I just shot, or the other projects, I will have the same attitude. I'm someone who will always try to protect the surprises. And uh, so it's going to be the same with uh, that project. I, I will be very uh, boring <laughs> when, I'm, I, when I, it's time to give uh, uh, answers. By, by the way, I love not knowing. The, the day and age we exist in now, it's unfortunate that so much is revealed. I like asking questions that are probing, but not spoiling. Yeah, understand, understand. You know, like that. that's my thing. Um, uh, but I have to ask, uh, Harrison is a part of your project. Yes. Was it tough to get him, or was it the script that you, you showed it to him? And uh, uh, to be very honest with you, Harrison was part of the project uh, before I arrived on the project. It was, uh, it, he was attached to the project uh, right from the start uh, with Ridley. And that uh, I met him, and uh, he's uh, honestly the, one of the nicest human beings I met, and, uh, very, and he's one of my favorite actors of all time. So for me, it's just, yeah, a lot of uh, pleasure. Um, I have to go, but I'm so happy you got Roger Deakins to shoot it, because I, I don't believe he's ever done sci-fi. He did once, a very long time ago, he did a movie called 1984. Oh, uh, yes. That in England, that is such a powerful movie. Uh, but Roger uh, was dreaming to do uh, sci-fi, to go back to sci-fi since a long time. And to convince him to do Blade Runner, it took me maybe... 2.5 seconds. <laughs> he said yes right away. I was so excited. <laughs> That's amazing. I have to go. Um, thank you so much, it's but I really mean it. Thank you. Congratulations on this movie. Okay, thank you very much.